Hello everyone, my name is Amy Braun, and I'm going to talk about how group and pair activities elevate L2 learning in the elementary classroom. A little bit about myself. I teach at a private elementary school in Japan. I was a first grade teacher, homeroom teacher, but now I teach second grade since April. The classes are small. There's only 26 kids in one class, and each class is mixed leveled in English and language ability. The curriculum is 60% in Japanese and 40% in English. I'm also entering my second year in a master's program for TESOL at Nagoya University of Foreign Studies. And my current action research is about how group cohesion and conversation strategies help to develop students' proficiency in English. Here is a conversation between two students about their favorite piece of clothing. Please listen for something. So what does this conversation mean? What's the meaning of this conversation? The meaning of this conversation is through pair and group work, these students can use communication strategies. Communication strategies or CSs allow learners to continue the conversation. They hear more input and produce new attendance. Why CSs? Well, CSs are part of the strategic competence that Savinian suggested in the in the four in the community of competence. Strategic competence refers refers to a speaker ability to explode verbal or nonverbal communication when communication problems arise. As you see, there are many different types of conversation strategies. For example, asking five W and an H question, 12 questions, partial shadowing, asking for clarification, uh, eh, mm, let me think, and so on. Asking for a translation in Japanese too, and partial shadowing, and so on, and so on. Here's a transcript of a conversation between two girls, Himari and Yuri. Please look up. Please take a look at line 3, 10, and 12. I mean, 13, sorry. 13. These girls are using follow question, rejoiners, and partial shadowing. Communication strategies. So how do I promote pair and group work while using CSS? One activity is small talk. Small talk is where students have about four minutes to get up, Go around the classroom and talk as to as many people, as many other students in the classroom using this conversation, using com CSs. Another activity was hot seat. Hot seat is where it can be in a group, in a small group, or cl whole class. And there is one person in the hot seat, and the other people have to ask that student questions. As you see on the screen, this can promote this can promote very good follow-up questions. Another activity is tell me what you see. So there's a there's a girl who is looking at the TV, and there's a boy who is holding an iPad looking at other direction. The girl has to communicate what she sees to the boy who will draw. They have to use negotiating meaning to communicate their i what what's going on so they can they can wholly communicate the picture so that you also use cs's another activity is more please so the students receive a paper version of this conversation and a has to come up with a follow-up question a and b well a both students can 
um, come up with a, a follow-up question and they have to use this conversation then to ask their partner. Of course, there's more activities that you can use CSS or group and pair cohesion. For example, three hints game, true false, songs, and multiple choice games. Another thing that is really important is to understand near peer role models. These are people who might be near to us in several ways, age, ethnicity, gender, interest, past or present experiences, and also in proximity of and in frequency of social contact. Also to understand ZPD and ZPA. Students work within their zone of proximate development, but to enhance their ability to adjust to different learning environments and show others how they might adjust to them, using and develop their zone of proximate adjusting. adjusting. You can see this between Kenta and Yuto. Um, as you see in this conversation, Kento, who is higher level, then in English, then Yuto, he is in the conversation to Ken Yuto in little bits, and he, he's using teacher echo. So Kento saying word by word, what, what, is, is, your, your. So this is helping Yuto to say the question. So there's scaffolding and teacher echoing coming, going on. Also, I view my classroom as non-lineal. A lot of teachers will view their classroom as lineal. There's only one line of students. There's only one group. There's different groups. But in reality, there are different groups and there's different kinds of students. There's I always saw my student, my class as 26 different individuals with different needs and different kinds of learners. Also the use of newsletter. I have this newsletter is a classroom newsletter given to the students and it features the students um comment any questions they have asked me some examples of follow-up questions and the use of feed forward for first graders feed forward is videos and books that can help promote them can can promote the idea of follow-up questions or the grammar or the cs's or the vocabulary that we've been talking about so they can learn more also, I have the kids reflect on their speaking tests. So they get, they in their pairs, their speaking test pairs, they watch the video, grade their self, and also they will grade uh, with different colors that mean good, okay, I can do better. And then they talk to their speaking pair partner about, about how they felt. So they reflect on their own speaking test and on their own speaking. Thank you so much. If you have any questions or comments, please contact me at this email below. Thank you.